Hey guys, this is Shadow Knight Paladin and welcome back to my channel. So today is another traditional art piece and we are doing watercolors again today and I'm doing another fan art. So recently this game called Fate Grand Order released in English in the US and well I've played it but it is still in the Japanese version but I'm playing the English version now. Feel free to send me your friend codes maybe but yeah. And I've been drawing the servants a lot, so I've drawn uh, Mashu, Artoria, David, um, Gawain so far, so most of the Knights of the Round Table-ish. Except I realized that despite being a fan of the game for quite some time, and just the Fate franchise in general, I haven't really drawn the protagonists, the masters. and. In their own right, the masters are pretty famous themselves, especially Gudako, the female protagonist. So, I'm gonna be drawing Gudako today. So, earlier you saw the figurine I was holding. Uh, that's the SH Fig Arts Body Chan figurine. So, that's the female version. It's just to help me figure out the pose a bit more and the proportions and seeing the pose in real life rather than in flat photos. And now we're using my usual. Uh, Reeves watercolor set tube things. Yeah. The paper we're using is the usual Canson watercolor pad with, I believe, 300 GSM. No, 200 GSM. Yeah, uh, it's my usual typical speed paint. And I just wanted to feature Gudako. And if you're familiar with Fate Kind Order and the various memes around it, Gudako is like at the center of that. So, in the anime, uh, I mean the Fate Court Grand Order anime special OVA, they actually featured the male protagonist, Fujimaru Ritsuka, but to be honest, the female is much more, like, famous. So yeah, I just wanted to do a pretty simple but also kind of cool looking piece, and I'm using mostly really hot colors, especially since she has orange hair, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys played Fate Grand Order? And if you've been following my channel for a while, you might know that I'm a bit of a fan of the Fate franchise in general. But are you playing Fate Grand Order? If you do, who's your favorite servant? Let me know since I play both the JP and the English version, so I'm quite updated on both sides. Even though I really haven't played since the start of Epic of Remnant in the Japanese version, since I switched over to the English version, where it's only Fuyuki. Uh, Fuyuki. What's the other AS? Fuyuki, Orleans, and Roma. I accept them. So there's only three chapters available right now. Currently waiting for Okeanos to release, since you get David for free when you get Okeanos, and, and David's a pretty good archer if you don't have a good one. If you don't have Emiya or Atlanta yet, or <laughs> Gil, Gil is so hard to get. I didn't, I wasn't able to get Gil in the last summoning. So if you don't have Emiya or Atlanta, or even like your um, uh, what's your name, Steno. Um, David's a pretty good replacement. I currently have two archers. It was I currently have Emilia and Arash. Arash is a bit too weak though in terms of attack power, and his NP, his Noble Phantasm, can only be used once. So I like him, but he's not really super useful in combat. Though he's currently at level 40, I think, and I don't have enough stuff to level him up. And Mia is also currently capped at his either 40 or 50 level, and I don't have enough monuments to. You know, I, don't, I don't have enough materials to level him, him up yet. But yeah, I can't. I want to play Okiana soon, especially since Francis Jake is there. And yeah, with um, Medea, Lily is there as well. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I'm a lot more prepared to play Okiana's now than when I played the Jap Japanese version since number one, I know what I'm getting into and number two, by the time Okeanos releases, a good amount of my servants, especially the ones that I actively use for as my main team, 
they would have been already pretty much powered up by the time Okeanos releases and I just need the materials to level, level them up further. So right now, I'm just like playing through the daily quests and their, their interludes and I'm just grinding for like the level up gems while waiting for Okeanos. Okay, let's talk about the piece real quick, just to fill up the time and as well as, you know, not be just a blank music-only video. So, when I started this piece, I knew what pose I wanted. I already had the pose in mind way before I decided I wanted to, do, to draw a Gudako. So, the pose was done. When I decided it to be Gudako, I knew that I wanted to go with the more hotter color scheme. But how I would execute the piece wasn't fully decided until I started actually filling it in. So originally, I would have done my usual technique of like, doing the line art first and, you know, putting the color under the line art. But for some reason, I decided to you do the other technique wherein you build the shapes using only paint. And for some reason, that turned out pretty well, especially since the background is pretty heavy with the dark and hot colors. It really, um, how do I put this? Not having the lines sort of balances out the heaviness of the piece, since it doesn't really define or take up any space of the white of the character. So it's nothing sharp, or yeah, yeah. Because the background is pretty heavy on the amount of detail on it. Not having lines on Gudako herself balances out. The, the the weight of the background if you know what i mean yeah so it was a good decision on my end to not do line art though i did do some line art but it's also with the paint so it's not as heavy to look at and then my other concern when i was doing this especially at the start was since i did an orange background and gudako has orange hair I wasn't completely sure how I was going to differentiate her hair from the background, especially when I started doing the shadows. Uh, I was able to fix that some sort by making the bottom of the background have a paint's gray tint over it. And then on the topper, on the upper part, topper part, on the upper part, I used red to give it more, uh, you know, more color, more saturation. And then I topped that off with burnt sienna to give it even more brownish look. And then for her hair, I just went straight with the burnt sienna and the orange base. So her hair looks a lot more yellowish than the background and that gives her a bit more pop. And then just to fill in a little, not just not to leave it white, I will later on add yellow around Kudako but that doesn't really blend everything. So. It turned out okay, is what I'm trying to say. I really do like how this turned out. Uh, I wanted to draw her entire figure, but it didn't really fit in the paper. I wasn't really able to plan it out properly. So yeah, I guess that's fine. <laughs> what I want to do though is make a companion piece of Gudao, also known now as Fujimaru Ritsuka. So that's the guy version. And also, did you know that I read on the wiki, I think, or somebody commented it that they read somewhere or it was some official source that Gudako and Gudao Fujimara Ritsuka is like the gender bend designs of Tosaka Rin and Emi Yashiro. So, <coughs> so Gudako is essentially how Emi Yashiro would look like if he was female and Tosaka Rin would be Gudao. Which is also funny because Shiro Emiya, the final protagonist of the Fate franchise, wasn't supposed to be male. And which I'll continue in the next video if you're still curious, I'll bring it up again. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, and leave me a tired. Like or, subscribe this, like or subscribe to me and this video if you like it. And I'll see you around.